God. Look out! Welcome to D-Mask. My name is Fresman, and today I'm joined by Sergeant Scare. How's it going today? It's going pretty good. Had a few hang-ups earlier, but uh, other than that, it was pretty good. <laughs> well, I know we've both had our share of scheduling conflicts thus far, but um, I w so you are a horror narrator on YouTube, would yeah. you say? Yeah, I do I do a lot of things. Uh, horror narration is just one of them, uh, my, my, but that channel is uh, just horror narration. I do a lot of voice acting and stuff as well. Hmm. Um, which, which is your main channel? Uh, I have no other channel <laughs> other than my horror narration. I just, uh, I do a lot of voice acting gigs on the side. Okay. I see what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. I do like, uh, uh, anime, um, uh, manga dubs. I'll do, uh, um, uh, audio books, hentai, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, as long as you're versatile, yeah, yeah, no, I mean, um, I actually don't like doing the last one as much. It's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's not only really weird. It's just, uh, I mean, it's not weird. I don't, I don't know. It's, uh, it's different. But uh, some of the people I work with like seem super sketchy, and I'm just like, okay. <laughs> some of them are super uh, nice though. Have you, uh, have you ever seen the show Yu Gi Oh? Yes, I grew up on that show. So. I was I was told about this and I had to go look it up, but apparently there's a scene, an, a, an animated scene, with the, that features the voice actor that plays uh, the Pharaoh from Yu-Gi-Oh. Okay, there's a. Wait, and, I'm sorry, keep going. Oh, but he he's like doing the voice, and you can't not hear it. Oh, okay. Come on, Yugi. Yeah. The heart of the no. cards. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, what is this? What that show devolves into? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, how long have you been on YouTube for? Um, around a year. Um, but actively a lot less than that. Mm. Um, let's see. I I was probably really active for two months in the beginning, and then mm. I just kind of did stuff back and forth. I got really busy with voice acting. Um. I ended up getting into the contest, um, Evil Idol, and uh, I, I went into there and I played second. Uh, I went to the second round, but I didn't get past that. There's a lot mm -hmm. of it. there's a lot of issues with that. But um, the um, I completely forgot what we were talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm uh, spacing out today. How long have you been on YouTube? Oh yeah, um, and then for about three months, I really um, I really pushed and then pushed it up to uh, like 100 subscribers. And uh, is it yesterday I just found out like that I'm basically have no presence on social media. They're like somebody was like, "Hey, go ahead and boost your presence, and I, I bet you'll get subscribers right away." Just did that yesterday, and I just bumped up ten. But well, there you go. Yeah, yeah, it's slow, but I mean, it's it's my little fun side thing. I mean, I started it um, originally because I sucked at narration, like it's mm. just absolute garbage at narration, and I was like, "Ah, uh, let's try to change that weakness into a strength." And uh, be one less thing I'm terrible at. But yeah. I've I, I've uh, I've helped some people with their their scripts on and off recently. And uh, one of my favorite jokes to tell is like midway through the editing process, I go, "Is it too late to admit that I can't read?" <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's fine. I'm sure it'll be fine. I'm just guessing. <laughs> Are these hieroglyphics? I have no idea. It's those moon runes. <laughs> What's this word? T T H. That's the. I, oh. I've made that joke a couple times at my work, and people look at me and they're like, "Yeah, don't even joke." <laughs> and they uh, <laughs> a, a huge mistake where I work and cost like like a hundred million dollars. Oh, jeez. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I, I work primarily. I, I work in aerospace, so yeah, it, it's just. It's if if something happens, it's it's terrible, <laughs> but uh, yeah, they're like, just please, no, 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 no. <laughs> I like I there's I believe near me there's a Boeing factory. I want to say that's the uh, company I work for, um, indirectly okay. for. But yeah, I uh, I'm contracted through uh, I'm contracted through another company for Boeing right now. 
Mm. Interesting. Yeah, I'm working on their uh, SLS project, their uh, rocket for NASA. Hmm. I don't think that's going to be happening in my state. Oh, what state? Oregon. Oh, um, no, <laughs> not in Oregon. <laughs> I'm like, I don't think Oregon has a space program. Uh, no, but you guys got well, below you. You guys got SpaceX uh, and a bunch like Virgin and everything else in California, and then above you, you guys have Blue Origin, and then uh, SpaceX has some stuff in Washington as well, like in Seattle. Mm. But in Oregon, I don't know of anything specifically in Oregon. I think Blue Origin might have something there, but I'm not sure. Mm -mm. All I know is we have a factory. I you can't see in it, and I have no clue what goes on in there, but it's it's there. I see it once in a while. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, there's a, there's a lot of aerospace done throughout the country, um, even if it's not, like, anything major. Like, there might be... Um... Okay, that was just... I completely... Uh... <laughs> my, my headphones completely disconnected there. My bad. Oh, that's all good. I've, I've had... Um... There's one of the earliest episodes of the show... We did 45 minutes without ever actually hitting record. Oh, that's fun. <laughs> Out of podcast with a buddy. Um, that's, that's pretty much what happened. We thought we did everything right, and then it turns out, no, we didn't do anything right. Actually, I think the only thing that recorded was the audio, but we set the, uh, or the, 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 uh, the video, but we set the camera to not record audio. So, <laughs> Yeah. We basically had just had to, we did the whole thing again and then just played it over the uh, original video. It just made no sense. I, uh, the, I used to strictly record through OBS. Oh, okay. And, and, uh, it gives you a little counter just at the bottom as to like how long you've been recording for. Yeah. And I, I had looked down like 45 minutes into us talking like, why aren't their numbers moving? Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> oh no! But thankfully, um, it's uh, Pat Man, or the Pat Man. Yeah. But he he was my first first guest on the show, and he was a very good sport about it. <laughs> Hold on one moment. Sorry. What's up? Sure. Oh, yeah, he's fine. Cut later. You can. Thank you. Appreciate it. My wife's going to pick up my kids, so she uh, she's trying to talk to me real quick. <laughs> Get out! <laughs> I see her frantically waving over to the side, and I was like, oh, <laughs> my cue. Shoot, shoot, go, go, go. <laughs> go! Oh, my favorite thing is, um, or, or the, the worst I, I think I hate, is I'll be, record, re, be recording like a, a creepy story at night, right? It'll be like 2 a.m., mm -hmm. 3 a.m., and it'll be about yeah. some. It'll usually be about somebody breaking in a, a, a breaking in your house and like coming up behind you and trying to kill you, you know. Mm. And there's one time she can't hear. She can barely. Uh, she probably. Uh, she can't really. Uh, like uh, when she wakes up, she probably wasn't paying attention to anything I was saying, but she was just super tired. I didn't hear it through my mic for some reason. She comes up mm. and taps me on the shoulder. I'm like, oh, go away, go away. <laughs> Or um, she'll randomly walk in the kitchen and I'll have to check the house and I, I don't see her. And then I'll go into the bedroom and be like, hey, did you just walk in the kitchen? She'll be like, no. And I'll, I'll catch her in the act next time. Like, you need to stop doing this. I'm about to have to stop recording because I'm freaked out. But See, at some point you got to do it back to her, but to the point of like ludicrousy where you're like, I'm not even in the house. And then you're like running around with like a sheet over your head. Oh, yeah. I'm just going to I'm just going to randomly tap on the outside of the window one day. And just uh, <clears throat> just make make sounds. I'm gonna get you. <laughs> <laughs> you like like take the day off work, but then when we were like, "Bye, honey, I'm going to work," and then start like throwing pebbles at each one of the windows. <laughs> just take the day off. It just mess with her the whole day. Can I curse on here, or is that no? Yeah, go for it. Okay, I'm a I'm a jet mechanic slash rocket mechanic by trade. We curse a lot. <laughs> mm. Um. <laughs> I think that's that prior military that's getting to me. <laughs> well, like, I, I, there was a theory that I came up with years ago that you could drive somebody to the brink of insanity just by changing one part of the routine. Yeah. And the, the example that I used was introducing meat. Introducing what? Meat. 
Meat? Yes. What, what do you mean? So just, as they're going throughout their day, just start leaving, like, raw meat out. What? But, but like, where they're, wherever they're going. But the, you, they never see you put it down. It just appears for them. <laughs> Jesus. Go into the bathroom to brush your teeth. There's just, like, a steak in the sink. Hey, honey, do you then see you... this? No. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> like turn on the sink. <laughs> no, no, you're crazy. I then know. like they go to leave. You leave and leave us like another like like a big porterhouse steak in like this passenger seat. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I think I just throw it. I don't know. I don't think that would mess with me. Like I. Well, then again, I'm, I'm a person that's like not um, routine based at all. I like thrive in chaos and everything I do, and. <laughs> Um, like me, uh, man, I, f- I feel like if I, if I saw meat, I just throw it at somebody and be like, Oh, that's real. <laughs> Somebody's messing with me. Who is it? I, I, I tried to put this one, like a version of that plan into effect, but, uh, regarding I, <laughs> so I bought a case, like a 60 piece case of candles that are shaped like little, mushrooms like your typical like garden gnome-esque mushrooms yeah and i was gonna leave them in like my roommate's room and just like put one and then like each day keep adding one and then the minute he brings it up to me like wait until he's gone and put the rest like circling his bed (laughs) (laughs) i I, i'm a good roommate (laughs) (laughs) Uh, that's stuff me and mine did all the time. Like, it usually, it, u- it usually revolved around like moving alcohol around and stuff that I knew he was looking for. Mm. He'd be like, "Man, who's moving my stuff? I have no idea, man." Are you t- are you going into my room? No, no, not at all. And I'd, I'd set a loop up on like a webcam. Like, it would, I was like recording this the whole time. And he'd be like, he'd look at it and be like, "Oh man," but it, you know, half of it would be a loop, and I just didn't move much, so you couldn't tell. Mm. And he's just like, dude, who's messing? Like, there's somebody's breaking in. And he'd just freak out. <laughs> but um, no, that's what he get, that's what he gets for getting me banned from the San Diego Zoo. So it's whatever. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. <laughs> oh yeah, I got I got arrested in San Diego. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking so, time out. Don't you, you can't just throw that. <laughs> I am banned from going to the San Diego's. What happened? So it was it was for like a year thing. I'm I'm probably I doubt I'm still banned. Um, but <laughs> so my roommate liked to drink. We all like to drink in the military, right? Here, we, sure. we lived in the barracks, whatever. We we'd have these marathons. We like we'd uh, have like a two day a two day three day or a one week marathon where you had to stay drunk. Like if it was a whole, if it was the whole week, you had to stay drunk for the entire week and that includes Uh, while sleeping. So you had, you couldn't, you couldn't sleep for more than like two, three hours at a time before Uh. you have to wake up, drink more and then go back to sleep. So you have to stay drunk for an entire week. Probably not good for the liver. And, um, so we'd go out and do things. We'd have like a a DD and yeah, we, we go and just do random stuff. And, uh, there was one day we went to uh, San Diego to their uh to the little zoo over there and not little but um one of my buddy decides to jump into the flamingo pen after uh he, he'd been trying to jump into pens all day and we've been catching but like no, no no you can't you can't jump in the tiger dude you can't jump in the tiger pen dude it's it's that's no go and uh he jumped he we weren't paying attention we were talking to some girl and he jumped into the flamingo pen and we look over we're like shit all right let's go get him and uh, we, we hop over, push him over the uh, fence. And at that point, this cop rolls around. And I'm the only one left in the flamingo pen about to jump over. So I'm like, ah, okay. He, he beelines it straight for me. He's just like, hey, we have, you know, um, people, people told us that you, that you were in the flamingo pen. I just saw you, blah, blah, blah. So he's like, basically, we're going to jail. Um, he only gets me. My other friends take off. They, they're long gone by then. And... Uh, I'm sitting in the back of the cop car going, man, what am I going to tell my first sergeant? Because uh, it's, it's the guy you have to deal with whenever you get into trouble, right? 
and I'm like, mm. oh man, this is gonna suck. Like I'm, I don't, I, I didn't want to like the mil, because the military can totally take a um, a civilian charge and then like court martial you for it, and which is like mm. military court, mm. uh, completely different rules. So I'm like, oh, man, I don't want to get court martial, kicked out or whatever. The cop looks, sees mm. I'm military, and he's like, look, I'll cut you a deal. You just don't come back, and we're good. He's like, uh, I, I'm pretty sure I know what happened. He's like, I, I talked to a couple other people, and there were other people in there. And he's like, I, I'm pretty sure you're just grabbing your drunk friend. But um, mm. yeah, he's like, don't come back to San Diego Zoo. Just don't come back. <laughs> so since that day, um, I've never attempted to go back. Hey man, that sounds like a video idea. We should have been. We should have videoed half the stuff that we did. But <laughs> I just, I guess it just didn't cross our minds. We got well, banned I mean, now from. You, could, you what? Well, I mean, now you could just stand there and like. I don't know, like the minute you put your foot in some, you know, rent a cop's going to run up. Hey, man, <laughs> I know you. We got banned from this place called Mulligan's once. Um, mm-hmm. And OK, so I'm, I'm pretty good when when I drink, like I can control uh, I, I can control myself pretty well. Um, mm. It's usually my roommate. That's the worst one. Um, he's a little guy. Whatever. I'm like six, four. I'm I am always I, I'm always out drinking people and. I'm, I usually have the most control for some reason, but, mm. uh, we went to Mulligan's and they have like little bumper. It's like a kid's place. Right. But it serves alcohol. So it's mm. got like bumper cars, laser tag, the rock climbing stuff, you name it. And, uh, you know, we decided to have a, just a couple drinks while we were there. A couple drinks mm. turned into about probably 15 and we're just <laughs> swerving back and forth going, Hey, let's go play laser tag. All right. <laughs> so, we get in on this group of this uh, 12 year old's birthday party, right? Yeah. And they didn't reserve a private uh, laser tag thing. They, they just, we, we ended up joining in with that group. And um, my, my roommate took it a bit more seriously than I thought he would. He, uh, he starts, he's, he's playing laser tag. He's pushing kids out of the way and stuff the whole time. And anytime mm. he sees a kid, he's either, he's, he's trying to dodge or he's just like, he charges them and bumps into them. And finally, uh, it turned out, uh, ended up, uh, we ended up losing that game, and he went ahead and uh, <laughs> drop kicked the uh, the kid whose birthday it was. <laughs> so that was. Uh, oh my god. Yeah, yeah, we we've been trying to calm him down the whole day, and we didn't we didn't think he would get, who's gonna go ahead and do that. But how? Okay, here's the real question: How old was the kid? He's like probably like twelve or fourteen, somewhere in there. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> Yeah, but the thing is, he was like the same height as my roommate, so we were good. <laughs> <laughs> well, even then, like, oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, so we weren't allowed to go back there, and uh, <laughs> we just kind of got out of dodge before the cops showed up. And yeah, we uh, we just decided to never go back to Mulligans, and we 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 had a friend go back just in case, and they they definitely had our pictures on the wall. So oh like, shit! <laughs> they were like, "Oh, yeah." I wasn't about have, trying to get arrested. <laughs> have you ever had uh, Midori? Had what? Midori. Midori. Yeah, it's a uh, it's a liqueur that tastes like watermelon, but it's dangerous because it hides the burn of other alcohol. No, no, I've never had it. So I, I'm not. I'm 60% sure that I haven't told this story on this channel, on the show, but I got, (laughs) so I'm not like, how do I put it? I'm not a sloppy drunk. I'm not, um, you know, an abrasive drunk. I, I get more like logical and like judgy. Yeah. Like, I'll just sit there and like, that doesn't make any fucking sense. Like, but, like, I'll be happy and laughing, but then it's like, like, I'll watch a movie and I'm like, that, huh. Hmm. But. I, yeah, I, uh, I do something similar. <laughs> yeah. And a, a buddy of mine had been back in town from the Israeli, Israeli military. And from what I hear, they like to party as well. And so we were partying up on a mountain, a mountain uh, in Oregon called Mount Hood. I know Mount Hood. And uh, it's up, uh, do you know where Government Camp is? 
yeah i'm, I'm I, I i think i i think i know what you're talking about um i spent i, I lived out in oregon for like eight years <laughs> so mm. not uh not insanely familiar but i think i know what you're talking about yeah it's like there's like timberline lodge and all that yeah but um buddy of mine lived up there so we went to his place and my buddy in the israeli military mixes like a couple of drinks and he puts the midori in which he, there's no burn like oh this is weak you know yeah and so i so i down like three pints of whatever drink he made with whatever vodka he could find <laughs> And I have the liver of, like, a five-year-old. Like, my tolerance <laughs> is terrible. And the thing is, for me, it takes a minute for it to hit my system. Yeah. And so I hear my buddy go, hey, we ordered a pizza, but we got to go walk down the road to pick it up. Let's go. I'm like, sure. I grab my jacket, and there's a long row of stairs leading to his front door. Leading down to his front door. Mm-hmm. And I get to the top of the steps and everything goes in like Hitchcock zooms down the, <laughs> down the, the stairs. And I almost go head over heels. I'm like, oh shit. And I'm like leaning on the railing and everybody else is already like outside. But the one buddy who mixed the drinks is like, you're right up there. I'm like, I'm, uh, I'm going to need a minute. <laughs> <laughs> and like... I, I was walking up, like, the main street of government camp, pissed drunk, and I was just, like, loudly commentating on, like, how bizarre the structure of the town is, because there's, like, one grocery store in four bars on one street. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and that, that was my main complaint. It was like, God, there's so many fucking bars around here. And... My my buddy goes, well, yeah, there's not much else to do up here. And, like, I was looking at one bar, and I, like, look across the street, and you can see from the front window of one bar into the other bar. <laughs> like, that's got to be a upsetting sight, to see somebody else drinking in a different bar. <laughs> I don't know, maybe they had a... Uh... Maybe they were like a partnered bar or something. I don't know. It's kind of weird. They're like, yeah, let's we'll 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 go into the liquor store and get some beer. Then they're like, you're gonna wait out here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, all right, cool, fine. I can just stand right here. <laughs> and I can't, oh, like my so what, the guy who lived up there would go on to become my roommate, and I. I love the guy to death because like he just like he's willing to accept how strange a situation is. Yeah, because everybody everybody else is stone cold sober. They've had maybe half a drink, and I'm not a big drinker, so this is new to me. And I'm looking around, I'm like, fuck, there's a lot of snow up here, man. <laughs> and I hear him go, "Yeah, we're on, we're on a mountain." <laughs> I, I would hope so. Yeah, we're we're on a mountain. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I I'm not the the I'm not the best nor the biggest drinker. Oh <laughs> uh, my my whole like dad side of the family like everybody's huge. I'm like I'm six four and I'm small from from that side of the family. And I have like mm. a cousin that's seven foot and it's, everybody's like a huge drinker. Everybody fights. Um, everybody is either like a professional fighter or has been a professional fighter. Mm. And, uh, yeah, we all get together and drink and yeah, that's, uh, I think that's the only reason I gain my tolerance is just cause I'm trying to keep up with them half the time. This dude that's seven foot can definitely outdrink me. <laughs> yeah. They're all from I, like, uh, Eugene, you know, Eugene. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We used to go out and hang out there like, uh, but yeah, that's pretty much all we, we'd, uh, we usually end up drinking and hang the, uh, uh, the littlest cousin of mine on a tree, but uh, with a uh, duct tape or whatever, just kind of mm. mess with him. <laughs> He's like, I think five, eight. He's definitely the shortest. And we just mess with him all the time. And we, my cousin that's seven, seven foot. He's just super, 
you know, like intimidating. Mm. And he's like, hey, little guy. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Picks him yes, up, shoves him like on a, a tree. Drink. You what? <laughs> yes, I would like a drink. <laughs> <laughs> I want to sit at the big boy table. <laughs> <laughs> The closest thing we have to an elf in our family. <laughs> so, so you know when you're you're drinking and it's it's a good idea to kind of have like some food in your system. Yeah. So I made that mistake once of not <laughs> eating. Jesus. I made that mistake once, <laughs> one time. Usually, all you have to make it. Well, I. So the worst part is is I recorded it. It's on my channel. Everybody can go watch it. In fact, I will shame myself harder. Hey party people at home, there will be a link to those videos <laughs> in this video. I think I'll even make a playlist just to spite myself. <laughs> but I so tell me how disgusting this drink sounds to you. It's a shot the big shot of coconut rum and chocolate liqueur. I uh, see you lost me at liqueur. <laughs> 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 I can uh, I can basically only drink uh, straight. Like once I hit mm. twenty five, I couldn't have anything with sugar in it anymore. Uh, there's one thing I can have with sugar in it, but it's uh, Irish cream. Yeah, because that that it doesn't have that like weird syrup thing to me yeah at least to me but i did i had a shot glass that it had, it had two separated sides that would mix when you took that shot and i played half-life opposing force on the hardest difficulty <laughs> fun fun and 26 shots later i think it was 23 26 and I hadn't eaten all day, and you can hear me get drunk. Like, oh, it's like, it goes from like, oh, this game's free fun to like, this game's so fucking difficult. God damn it. <laughs> and uh, uh, when I was editing it, it <laughs> I put a, a shot counter, and then there's a ding sound every time I die. Yeah. So it's a shot every time you, you die. It's and so what you would see was the character hit the floor, then you hear, damn it, ding, and see the <laughs> the number pop up. <laughs> and I so you know when you're hungover you gotta kinda take it a little bit easy. Yeah. For for the for you know, for those who don't drink at home but it's um it's a it's a good idea to maybe get something small to eat something like toast something non it's not gonna mess you up yeah but i made i made the mistake of chugging water oh, when i woke up no it wasn't like super cold was it it was room temperature because okay. so so we <laughs> Side note, side note. Uh, for some reason, when I'm drunk, I'm I plan for when I'm sober. Good. Okay. And, and so, like, so, like, drunk me is like, I'm gonna feel this in the morning, so I'm gonna put a big cup of water on my desk and two of aspirin, and then I'm going to fall onto my bed and pass out. I feel bad for future me. Here you go. <laughs> yeah. Like I gotta plan accordingly. <laughs> and then I wake I wake up, I'm like, pass me, you fuck genius, and then I chug this giant cup of water, and then my stomach goes, no, man. <laughs> you know what really helps besides mm -hmm. drinking, besides drinking water regularly when you're drunk? <laughs> but uh, we're not, we're not going to, we're not going to go over that. <laughs> but what really <laughs> helps is uh, there's, there's this uh, Gatorade, it's called Lemon Pepino, it's cucumber, right? It tastes like mm. garbage the first time you drink it if you're sober. Mm. But if you drink it when you're hungover, it's like the water of the gods, okay? It's, it feels like it's just hydrating the hell out of you. 
And then, it's nectar. <laughs> anytime after that, like you could probably drink it like regularly sober and be fine. It just doesn't, mm. I, don't, I don't know what it is, but everybody I've ever introduced it to, they all just like, oh, thank you. This is so good. And then they'll try it when they're sober and like, this is kind of weird. They'll drink it the second time when they're sober and like, okay, yeah, this is good. <laughs> but yeah, my wife, she's not a really big drinker. And I've had, I tried to have her drink it before, like the, the like before she ever, I've ever seen her hung over, you know? And then she's mm. like, this is, uh, the, no, I'm never drinking this again. And then she was super hungover. She's like, no, that's nasty. I'm like, no, just try it. I, I swear by it. And she's I like, promise you. This is the best thing I've ever had. Oh my God. <laughs> so what's, what's the most you've ever had to drink? Oh, I don't even know, dude. Um, <laughs> like, I can't remember. <laughs> I, um, I, I know what I'm not allowed to have to drink. But <laughs> I'm never allowed to have SoCo. I always cross state lines, and I don't know why. Um, like I, I'll usually black out and wake up, you know, across state lines. Like when California, I'd end up in Nevada or Arizona. But like, why the fuck I am? Why the fuck am I in Arizona? I need to get back, especially when I was in the military, because you only have a three-hour radius. Canada? You what? In Canada? <laughs> what? Why am I in Canada? What? How did I get a passport? <laughs> I think you need a passport nowadays, but uh, you still only need a driver's license. But uh, yeah, I, I always, and with the Irish whiskey, I get really intense. I don't know why. It's it's not that I like want to fight. I, I'll totally fight on Irish whiskey, but um, mm. I just get really intense. I get really passionate about stuff and I don't know why. I'll just hug the mm. shit out of everybody and be like, oh, I love you. And somebody like, it, it's hard to fight me when I'm drunk because I'm, such, I'm usually in such a good attitude. Um, I'm just mm. a really, really happy drunk. And uh, I'm usually trying to keep everybody out of trouble too. Um, but there, I've, I've, I've gotten into drug and fights from guys that just like, oh, you're 6'4", you're I want to fight. And it's just like this 5'2 guy. All right. Okay. <laughs> I can see how hey, I'm motivated. Whatever happens, drunk. happens. <laughs> it was always, is it in the barracks, it was all, we had Marines on our on our base. Right. And then mm. they'd always like, they all, they'd always get out of control. And that's what the Marines are supposed to do. They're supposed to be the foaming dogs of the, uh, of the U S you know, or the, the, the mm. dogs with the foamy mouths, like the intimidating force. And, mm. um, they all, they're always pissed off. They're, they're always like, they never get what they're supposed to really get. Um, they never have the right resources. Um, <laughs> we just always called them our, our special brother. Um, <laughs> But yeah, they, they'd come to our dorms after breaking like all the, like they'd have a pool table in their dorms that we had for them, or our barracks that we had for them. And then uh, they'd break that. They'd break their air hockey table, all their vending machines. They'd bust it out and like take all the snacks out, punch holes and everything. And so they'd come to our, uh, they'd come to uh, like our day room where we had like a pool table and a TV and everything mm. um, to kind of relax in after work. And they'd try to break our stuff. And we're like, no, 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 no. And most of the, a lot of the other, like, a lot of the people that would usually be partying in there, like, they'd have, like, um, more of the, people like to say chair force related jobs. I did not. I was a jet mechanic through and through. 16 hour days on the flight line. But, um, yeah, they'd, uh, they'd, they'd be like some of the more office type guys a lot of times in there. And they, they were more, uh, I don't want to say beta, but they were more (laughs) like, uh, Meek. Uh, they, they they would be willing to let things slide because they were smaller. And then there's me. <laughs> and I'd be like, no, 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 you're not. Get out. And they'd be like, oh, I could fight you. Okay, yeah. You know how much training I've had? Okay, cool. I've had 19 <laughs> years for. of wrestling training. <laughs> I was trained by an ex-WWF wrestler for 19 years. Uh, let's go. <laughs> and they'd always end up on their back. And I'd, I'd usually end up making them uh, squeal like a pig to get out. I don't understand your chair force. I don't know. You picked the wrong guy, I guess. I don't know. Which which uh, wrestler, if you can give that information? Yeah, I can give that. Dude, I, I don't care. You can ask me for my name. Uh, I, it, my moniker is only just like the thing that most tour narrators do, so I just decided to go for it. I didn't, it doesn't mm. really bother me. Um, mm. So Jesse Barr, you can literally Google it. Jesse Barr or Jimmy Jack Funk. He wrestled with like Terry Funk and uh, Andre the Giant, Hulk Hogan, and all of them. Oh shit! Yeah, yeah, he was. He trained. Uh, he trained like Lex Luger and a lot of the, uh, a lot of guys in WWF. It's mostly Boy. in the eighties, but he did some nineties stuff. I think early two thousands oh, as well. Because if I remember, 
uh, I don't know how big you are into wrestling currently, but um, I've, I've I, seen uh, a little bit. I, I'm not a big fan of like nowadays wrestling. I was a big fan of like the mid aughts wrestling. Mid oh, uh, okay. Well, that, like, that's a little like, after they went to PG then, right? Yeah, like it was edgy, but in like a weird half-assed way. Well, I think they still carried some of that the attitude era with them a little bit. Hmm. And so you could just and, you what? And then they save the dark stuff for like the events. Yeah. Yeah, there was was it? There was a um. I think it was Mick Foley versus Edge where. He got like the uh, edge got like choke slammed onto thumbtacks. Yeah, I think I've seen that. And that was. Ugh. Ugh. I think Mick Foley's but, been slammed into thumbtacks a few times. More than a few times. <laughs> yeah. he, sl- he always always he slammed weird... himself into some thumbtacks. Yeah, dude, he's he's always done some weird stuff. He just get thrown off of a uh, thrown off of that huge cage. Whatever. <laughs> Yeah, that like thirty foot drop through a table. Hell in a cell. <laughs> they were supposed to walk the uh, the top of that that morning, and they didn't. And I guess one of I think one of them was hurt. Either the Undertaker or uh, Mick Foley. One of them was uh, um, one of them was hurt, and they didn't feel like going up there. And then uh, they were supposed to see if it was actually stable, you know, and see if they could actually do it. And Undertaker's like mm. huge. He's like what six eight, six nine at least. Mm. And um, you know, the, I guess that it just the the cage did not support the weight very well. It, their feet just kept going through. <laughs> well, like their feet went through, and then Undertaker just like half pushed McFoley off of the side and through the commentator <laughs> table. But oh my god! I think it's funny. A lot of people like to throw out the word fake, and it's like I don't think you understand how much like hard work and like much of your, of your body you sacrifice in that. Because, like, mm. I, I'd watch my dad all the time. Like, he, man, he would come home and he, he would just be wrecked afterwards. Like, he has, like, no ACLs. He's, he's just messed up all over, right? But uh, people go, oh, fake. And it's, like, not fake. <laughs> it's definitely, if it, you can't fake falling on a ladder. Like, it hurts every single time. Shit, you can barely, Wait, you can't even fake getting hit by a ladder. Those chairs are still yeah. metal. I mean, they they might be the 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 way they hit the the they spread out the blow a bit, but you still get hit hard with that chair. And mm. I think the tables are probably what hurts the least, just because those are things are made to give. But I'll hear things like, "Oh, they they uh, they weaken the tables so they so that they fall through them better." And it's no no no, they the tables just suck, like they'll break. But if yeah, you, they're just like card tables. If you try to cut the bottom of those tables, it'll actually it, it'll it'll get you hurt more. Hmm. Yeah, I've I've gone through a few, and it's 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 not so bad when you when you, if you don't try to alter it. If you try to alter it, it would just it would screw you up so bad. Hmm. But yeah, I I think I, it's funny that people go like full fake, and it's like oh you go do it, <laughs> you try it, go for it. I had a buddy who just uh, he he was it like a year and a half ago or so. He just premiered on SmackDown. I went to basic <clears> training <throat> with him. I think he's been. <clears throat> I don't. I think he might have. Worked with my dad a little bit. I'm not sure. I, I think my dad tried to give him some advice on how to get in. Um, Who's your dad? Uh, I was telling you earlier, uh, Jimmy Jack Funk or Jesse Barr. That's who trained me. That's your dad? Yeah. Yeah, that's my dad. Well, well no, you said he trained you. You didn't say dad. <laughs> no, no, yeah, he's my he's my dad. <laughs> oh, yeah, I told you earlier, my, all my family is like professional fighters. Son of a... Like my uncle was in WCW. And, you what? Well, when you said, son of a bitch, <laughs> that's fucking awesome. <laughs> I to say, I, I, you learn, you learn how to toughen up from a young age. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like you, man, you get the worst of everything, especially if you're one of the smallest. Cause they, they come at uh-huh. you with like all the insults, all the, uh, all the physical, like, man, they lift you up and throw you around. You're like, okay, you get tough uh, <laughs> mentally and physically that way. Somebody like somebody will try to tell you like uh, you, you, you go to somewhere later in life. Somebody oh your oh your mom well, that doesn't bother me <laughs> that much. You can hard there's very few things you could say to me that will actually make me mad. But same here. But when you hit that thing, 
it's uh, it's on. <laughs> oh yeah, my my wife knows what what buttons to press, and I'll be like, oh, seriously, you need to back off. <laughs> She'll just start laughing and poke my little buttons. She knows I'm not gonna do anything. <laughs> I just, son, son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> now I have the Wikipedia article open. Yeah, but I think oh, it's shit. not. Uh, there's some things that are weird about Wikipedia. Like I've tried to correct some of it, and it won't let me. So I just kind of like, all right, whatever. But some, they'll be like, yeah. I think that some, there are some articles um, that I'll see on him on the internet that'll be like, oh, he disappeared at this, uh, at this, uh, at the, on this year. And then like some people like some, uh, or one of them will say like, I think he works in Louisiana. <laughs> I mean, he's in Louisiana, but yeah, it's just kind of like, uh, there's no speculation. Like, it seems like nobody knows where he is. And it's like, eh. If you really look, you'll find them on Facebook. Well, I, I love the ones where it's like people get like, what was it? They did it to Tom Kenny, the voice of SpongeBob. They're like, rest in peace, Tom Kenny. And he like on Twitter, he's like, I'm not dead. Wait. <laughs> what he should say is, yeah, rest in peace, Tom Kenny. <laughs> Just throw everybody off. <laughs> oh, I would. Man, it sucks that I died. They've done that to, uh, crap, I can't think, Henry Winkler, like, quite a few times. <laughs> My favorite ones are the Chuck Norris ones, because every time they come out, you just got to scroll all the way to the bottom and read the punchline. Because hmm. the was the last one with coronavirus. Like, everybody was like, oh, Chuck Norris is dead. They'll be like, did you actually read the article? He's come out, like, every four years. And like, oh, okay, I need to, let's scroll down. Oh, and then he came back and killed corona. Got it. What was that one joke? It's like Chuck Norris got bit by a snake and then after three long, agonizing, painful days, the snake died. <laughs> or uh, Chuck Norris's tears cure cancer. Too bad he never cries. <laughs> there, oh, God. I'm reminded of one from middle school, which is uh, Chuck Norris doesn't do push-ups. He pushes the world down. <laughs> but under Chuck Norris's full magnificent beard is another fist ready to strike. <laughs> Dude, those were like my thing. Like I had a, uh, I got, I got one of my, uh, my best friends, a, a whole book of those things, uh, uh, for his birthday once, uh, I think back in like 2008, whenever they were popular and uh, we just sat there and read through all of them and just had a blast with it. <laughs> I, uh, they, so, <laughs> so on, on the topic of wrestling, I, I love goofy wrestling characters. I love them to death. I love, like, like Rey Mysterio is goofy to me, but in a good way. Mankind was like that for me, because he had Mr. Sacco. I love, I love Mankind. I love Cactus Jack. Yeah. Uh, dude love. The really gimmicky guys. <laughs> mm -hmm. Jake the Snake. <laughs> Jake the Snake Roberts, yeah. But, uh, Macho Man Randy Savage. <laughs> Oh, He's actually Macho a really good Man. family friend of ours. Uh, I love Macho Man to death. But uh, one of my favorites is Gold Dust. Oh, okay. Yeah, they screwed him over so bad, though. Well, he, like, you could tell that they just weren't, they weren't giving him matches. Because it's, uh, like, Monday Night Raw has a huge backlog on uh, Hulu, surprisingly. Yeah. And so me and a buddy of mine went back and watched like a good, like two years worth of Monday Night Raw. Yeah, they, they go back quite a bit. I, uh, when my buddy told me that he premiered on SmackDown, I went back. Uh, it was like, I saw him, I saw him in that movie, uh, fighting with my family. Right. And I was just fiddling on my phone. And I hear his voice and I'm like, wait, <sighs> what? And then I, I look up, I don't see his face and I, I rewind it. I'm like, oh, that's him. What? Okay. I give him, I give him a, a ring and I was like, dude, what are you, are you on, are you in movies now? He's like, oh yeah, I train with that family. So he's like, when I was out and when I was stationed out in England for a little bit, I, I, I trained with that family. So they went ahead and put me in the movie. I was like, oh, okay. But he was, uh, he's like, yeah, I'm on SmackDown. Go look me up. And I was like, this is it. I was like, is, uh, is WWE even on SmackDown? He's like, yeah, there's a bunch of episodes on, on Hulu. I went and looked, and uh, yeah, there's there's a pretty good bit. Okay, so I was holding off asking 
but I, I, I kind of fucking know now. Who is it, man? Oh, my buddy. Um, he's not. He's not currently on there right now. He he premiered on that one day. Um, but sure. his name is uh Nicklaus Barnes. Let me try to get a spelling because I never remember his. It's like N I K O L A U S or something. Um. I know how to spell his last name is B A R N E S. I saw it on his name tag every day when I was in the military, but. Um, mm-hmm. Like we, hunt, um, he was a really good, he was a really good buddy of mine. Uh, N I C K O L A U S. Nicholas, oh, there he is. Yeah, this dude's ripped. He d- he looks familiar. He, yeah, he was on he was on one of their like posters for uh, one one of the recruitment posters one year I think, uh, for the year that he was doing it. But yeah, he was supposed to be one of their like anticipated uh, recruits for that year. And he premiered on mm. that episode of SmackDown. They just gave him like a job a role, you know. He just went and got his ass kicked by Shane McMahon. But mm. um, I think he was in the ring for like fifteen seconds. But, <laughs> I mean, that's the kind of that, that's what he like. Because my my dad was I think when I, my dad was trying to talk to him, he was like, "Yeah, stay away from WWE. Like, they're gonna screw you over." And he's like, "No, no, no. That's who I want to work for. I don't I don't care about any of the other ones." He goes, "Okay, if that's exactly what you want to do, here's how to do it." But. I mean, it just involves an insane amount of training. Uh, future me in editing, I, I found a photo of him getting, like, jump elbowed by Shane McMahon. <laughs> oh, from that uh, <laughs> from that match? Yeah, so future me in editing, please put that up. <laughs> please. Oh, my goodness. I... Well, son of a yeah, he's a, he's a really I, good guy. I wasn't expecting this interview to go that way. <laughs> I don't. Know. I don't think I was, but I don't think I was. I, was, I don't think I was. Thought I was going to talk about anything like that, but it's not. No biggie. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, oh jeez! Like, like I'm I'm rolling through a rolodex of like, I've met one famous person in in person. <laughs> I've met a bunch. <laughs> Um, so there's a lot of filming and stuff that's done in Louisiana and sure. like you always, you'll, every once in a while you'll, you'll see uh, an actor, actress that'll randomly show up for filming and be like, Oh, mm. okay. You're here. Um, I was in, um, crap. Oh, uh, this movie coming out. Um, Mona Lisa and the blood moon. I wasn't like, mm. I didn't have a, like a major part. I was just doing extra roles cause I had nothing to do that day. And I was like, oh, let's just pick up some random extra roles. They pay a little bit. And, um, you know, uh, I can't remember. Hold on. Let me Google the movie. Because I, I just, I don't want to be like, you know that black guy from that movie? <laughs> <laughs> I can never remember his name, though. And I don't know why. Because I've said it like a million times. Um, Craig Robinson. He's the uh, mm. the black guy from Hot Tub Time Machine. There we go. I said okay, it anyway. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, he was, he was in that, like, I didn't know he was in that movie. Right. So I'm just doing my extra stuff, like standing around being, you know, being super sexy, all that jazz. And, uh, yeah. I just look behind me and I see him right there. He's just like right over my shoulder. And I'm like, dude, what, <laughs> why are you here? <laughs> and he just is like, what do you mean? Why am I here? I'm acting. And I was just like, all right, <laughs> like, I guess that's cool. Like, I just did not expect, cause all the actors and actresses I've seen, like I at that point, like I just didn't expect to look over and see him. You know, I hadn't seen him yet. I was like, okay, I'm I'm here. I'm here to act. Well, shit, he's got me there. <laughs> oh, it's like uh, when I went to go. I, I did a photo shoot for NCIS New Orleans, right? And uh, mm. they, you know, doing my thing, looking all sexy. No, no, not at all. Um, we were in the uh, in the the cafeteria, and they were like, "Okay, all the big actors and actresses are out. Um, they're they're all doing their shooting. You guys can go. You know, you lowly extras can uh, can go eat now." And they had the best food. Like, oh man, they had the they had the andouille, like real good andouille sausage and crawfish etouffee and everything. It's, oh, I don't know if you ever had it, but it's it's real good, especially if you get it done by like a really good place in New Orleans. I have not, but now I'm going to have to go to Louisiana just for that. Louisiana has the best food. I've been, I've been to a lot of places. I've been to a lot of states in the U.S. And, like, I lived in Vancouver, uh, Portland for, like, eight, nine years. Mm. And, like, when I was, dude, like, they, 
like the food there, I, I've been back since too. It just feels, it, it always tastes bland to me. <laughs> and like California was the same thing. And everybody's like, oh, mm. try in and out It's so good. It's n- not, no. It did not taste good at all. <laughs> try Raising Cane's. Um, <laughs> but uh, they, yeah, it just, Louisiana, in my experience, just always the best food, dude. But I looked over uh, while I was eating and just saw uh, the soup. I can't, I can't remember his name, but it's like the super old dude from uh, NCIS New Orleans. And I was like, dude, I, you're not even supposed to be here. And he's just like, I don't know. Everybody's like, why are you talking to him? Is. I was like, I don't know. He's here. I don't, like, that's something that never bothered me. Like, people were like, oh, you can't talk to him. Like, uh, I can, because I did. Wait, Scott Bakula? I think that's his name. Uh, let me look real quick. Because if I remember, he was also in Star Trek Enterprise. Yeah, that's who it is. Hell Yes. <laughs> I, um, have you have you ever seen the Jackass movies? Yes. Um, do you know Aaron McGahey or Danger Aaron? Okay, that name sounds familiar. Uh, if you've seen Jackass Three, is the guy who gets his tooth pulled out by the Lamborghini? Yeah, yeah, I, I've seen him. So he apparently lives in Portland, in Oregon. Oh, okay. And. And I was at a Trailblazers game years ago when I was a teenager, and it was right after Jackass 3 came out. Like, right after. And they, the, what used to be the Rose Garden, but now it's like the Moda Center or something, they got bought out. But, um, they, they do like, oh, we've got a celebrity in the house and all this. And they, they point the camera into the audience and they point at, some drummer from some band. I'm like, cool, it's guy with bandana, even though it's like midnight and sunglasses indoors. Awesome, cool. And then, like, two rows in front of him, he there's Aaron McGahey from Jackass. <laughs> and they're not pointing the camera at him. He's, like, out of focus. It's like, whatever, I'm here. But... And like, but it's on the jumbotron, and I'm sitting next to my, my buddy, and I, like, slap him on the shoulder. I'm like, is that, is that Aaron McGee from? J- Wait, is that, like, Danger Aaron? Like, what, what row is he, and where is he sitting? Yeah. And and we we like just by looking like scanning the rows, we found him, <laughs> and then we're like, all right, here's what we're gonna do. <laughs> the minute. This game lets up. We're going to stand up, going to calmly walk out to the hallway, and then we're going to haul ass downstairs and try to catch him. <laughs> Let's go talk to him. Yeah, and to this day, I'm so mad at myself because I didn't have, like, a pen or a Sharpie. But I ran up to him, and, like, I kept... I'm surprised... I'm, I'm surprised with myself that I kept my cool, but I just, I went to shake his hand and went, Hey man, big fan. Sorry about the tooth. (laughs) You should have just, you should have just poked his uh, finger with something. Be like, can you write on my shirt with your blood? (laughs) Be like that super crazy fan. Probably been like, all right. (laughs) He was in jackass. I mean, what is he going to say? No. Well, the the, re- the reason I like Aaron McGee is because he's, like, the most, like, it, he seems to be, at least, the most, like, level-headed of the group. Yeah. Everybody everybody else is like, we'll just jump in front of a moving car or something like this. And he's like, I don't know. Like, you see him in the background, like, I don't think I want to do this. <laughs> he was, uh, have you ever seen um, Rocket Power? Rocket Power. Uh, yes, I have. He's the uh, he's Sam from Rocket Power. I don't know, guys. We shouldn't be doing this. <laughs> he still does it anyway. Whatever. <laughs> I just, uh, like I'll have to find him again at some point. Like I've been trying to contact him for an interview <laughs> on here, but he's very hard to get a hold of. Probably because he's out doing stupid stuff. From what I hear, he's doing photography now. Oh, okay. Fun, fun. Same, 
surprisingly same with um what's his name jason lee oh, okay uh brody from uh mall rats yeah okay i think yeah uh, apparently he's got his own photography thing going on which good for him man nice surprise yeah <laughs> I forgot what I was going to say. I was going to say something. I, yeah, I'm i spacing out again. I'm not here half the time, man. I'm tired. <laughs> like, I, uh, I'm i either working all 12s at work or then they'll just randomly be like, oh, no, you can go home today. It's, it's only eight hours. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're fine. Just go. <laughs> okay. Cool. I, I, used to, I used to work in a warehouse that did that. I did uh, temp work for a while, and it was a very lax warehouse. I... Um, I, it was like a car part assembly, but not like, not like the big robot arm, like, you know, using a power drill and all that. It was, I, I did something called high pot testing, which was essentially testing like the wiring for fuel filters. Oh, okay. And it was just like clamp tiny, uh, what's it called? Clamp tiny, uh, like jumper cables onto it and then just push a button, runs electricity through it, hey, complete circuit, and then just throw it into the box, move on to the next one. I've done that with, um, I've done something similar with uh, solar panels. I worked at uh, this mm. company, um, we'll call them Schmeck that makes rockets out in California. Uh, Pace, Pace Hex. <laughs> <laughs> owned by elongated muskrat yeah maybe <laughs> <laughs> perhaps perhaps can't confirm or deny per- perhaps i i cannot say anything bad because i don't want to get fined like five grand for every instance <laughs> as per the last stupid thing that i had to sign while leaving i i doubt the the robot slash car in orbit's gonna watch this episode <laughs> <laughs> i think my name's somewhere on there uh, my name's on like a bunch of uh, okay before I get to that okay so oh, just so you know there oh, are shit. so many dicks in space so many <laughs> like, <laughs> there are just so many like oh man so people will laser engrave things on two parts yeah. and I'm, I'm not going to say whether I was at least half of those or not but I might have <laughs> been my group definitely definitely might have been and uh, oh. we would just put like the Mona Lisa on stuff because you know why? Why not? And just like just throw random stuff, usually dicks. So many dicks. Because you have oh. all these like prior military guys, right? Like the whole company. Mm-hmm. There's like a fourth of the company was like prior military at one point, right? So you have like all mm-hmm. these ex-army, you know, ex ex-navy or ex Air Force guys. Screw the puddle pirates. Um, nobody likes the coast. Guard. Nobody likes the coast guard. <laughs> um, but they uh, yeah so you get them all together and what's going to happen you're going to have a lot of cursing in an area and you're going to have so many dicks just on everything <laughs> and I'm sure there's at least five on that car but uh, like I like to imagine that they're not like very neatly laser engraved it's like somebody just like scratched it in there with like a key well okay so the laser engraver you have to have an image so um you, t- you do it with a computer <laughs> so what do you do google google images <laughs> dick butt or just... you draw one up you take a picture of it you upload it onto your phone have it the same uh <laughs> have it the same type of file as the uh as that program uses and then just yeah i mean i'm sure some of them are sketchy but I'm sure some of them are, are from just straight Google images. And I want to see the IT guy's face whenever he like looks through the history at one point. Just like, why is everybody using this computer to look up dicks? What? <laughs> we had it under a certain folder. It was named um, Astute Literature or something like that. <laughs> it, was just, oh my God. it was just dicks. <laughs> like, uh it was that and just like just really i think we had like the you know the the trucker like lady silhouette thing there's a Uh, few of those uh, the mud flap like bikini girl yeah yeah that girl (laughs) 
There's a couple of those in there. It's just like all the random stuff like that in there. Oh, under astute literature. That's that's gonna recontextualize a lot of like launches <laughs> <laughs> from here into the future. I hope nobody ever finds out. I just hope that, that nobody ever actually looks at these parts at like that <laughs> closely and they're just like, Oh yeah, yeah. The, and one day it's just like this one QA guy. Wait, there's a dick on. Wait, there's a what? They're everywhere. <laughs> we need to stop this launch. There's one on every bolt in the ship. One of our uh, supervisors walked up on us doing it one day and we he was he was kind of new and we're like uh he's he's an ex navy dude and he uh we, we uh you hear like hey what's up and we look over like shit and it's obvious what mm. we're like he's right behind us he can see everything we're doing yeah and he's like what you what you doing and we're like putting dicks on parts and he was just like why are you putting dicks on parts we're like <laughs> because we wanted to we're like why what would give you the reasoning to do that and we're like well the rocket looks like that so we're just like basically putting a an image that looks like the rocket on these parts, you know, to, you know, to claim territory. <laughs> He's just like, all right, just keep, I'm just going to walk away. Do whatever the fuck you want. <laughs> but oh. yeah, we, um, <laughs> so circuits. <laughs> so I did that. I did a similar thing with solar panels for, um, the rocket from pace packs, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> mm. <clears throat> I was there for like four years. Yeah. Oh, I, man, they, they got, they, they know how to get people, draw people in. I was going to go work in Abu Dhabi for a year, right? After I got out of the air force mm. working on F-16s, that's my airframe. And mm. I was, the, I was the uh, crew chief for F-16s, like the main mechanic. My name's on the mm. jet and everything, whatever you're like, if anything happens, you're going to jail. And, um, mm. I was going to go work in Abu Dhabi, <clears throat> make it in like, crazy amounts and then spacex is like hey you want to come work for us and be poor and then i'm like yeah that sounds fun you're right i do want that <laughs> i do want to put things in space <laughs> dicks in space but <laughs> i'm gonna make a documentary for that one day dicks in space <laughs> no we it's it's like the was it like the hbo specials <laughs> So we found you out know. that over the last <laughs> over the last decade, there have been over ten thousand dicks in space. You know when they when they launched that mission to Mars, I just we put one on every bolt, every nut, every panel, every circuit, every capacitor, anything we could find. Laser engraving Sharpie. <laughs> <laughs> It's drawn on the insides of the astronauts' helmets. That's what I did for oh, no. two and a half years. <laughs> no, not on the helmets. Um, I did. I okay. did get to see those up close, though. They were doing the. Uh, they were doing the uh, acoustic testing, for them in the uh, in the boom room next to mine. Boom rooms where you basically pressurize stuff, and it, it contains explosions if it explodes, which is a lot. And. Mm. Uh, they uh, they were doing a, a acoustic testing in the other room. I guess they were just hitting it with different different types of sounds, see if it cracks, see what happens with it. And um, I was like, "Hey, what are you get doing?" They're like, "Oh, we're doing we're 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 doing uh, acoustic testing for this." And I walked up and I was like, "Can I touch it?" And they're like, "Yeah." Can I take a picture with it? Yeah. <laughs> Can I wear it? I did. I did say that, and they were like, "No." <laughs> Damn it. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, have you worn it? He's like, look, you don't need to ask me the questions. <laughs> I was just like, all right, whatever. See, see with like, like the, 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 um, what's it called? The sort of function of my YouTube channel. I, I think my first question would be, does it come in pink? Everything comes in blue. <laughs> Damn it. No, like, um, what is it? Elongated muskrat is obsessed, with, <laughs> is obsessed with the color blue. Um, you'll, if you see pictures of the inside of that yeah. room of, of pace packs, um, or even in the South park version, right? 
everything's uh-huh. like blue for some reason. And there was a uh, one point the uh, we had he looked up at the crane. He goes, "Why is that? Why is the top of that crane red?" And we're like, "I don't know." <laughs> He's like, "It needs to be blue. We're gonna make that blue." <laughs> He's like, "Jesus Christ! All right, everything's blue. Everything, even the lines on the floor are blue." I don't know what it is. He just really oh. likes blue. But I forgot where I, I was mean, going with that. But yeah, everything's blue. Huh. I think all the astronaut stuff or uh, I think all that stuff is is black though or white. I think there's some blue in there. Um that last I mean, there has that be. last thing that went up though with the uh the um, the maybe man, maybe not man launch. Because uh, I, I don't want to get too specific. <laughs> the the flips a coin. The uh, probably manned launch. Um, uh, that uh, I was super nervous for that, dude. I, we were, I was sitting there in uh in the Boeing facility, and we're all watching it, and they're just like, "Oh, did you work on that?" And I'm like, "Yeah," and they're like, "Is that why you're being super quiet?" And I'm like, "Yeah." <laughs> like what are you waiting for and i was like i'm waiting for this thing to succeed so i don't ever have to get talked to because they can still call me back in and i could maybe go to jail if something happens and they're like well do, was your work good i was like yeah but the people i worked with sucked <laughs> some of them some of them not so much some of them were awesome some of them were like barely conscious so oh god yeah dude like with aerospace you think you have to be like and I'm definitely not, but you think like people working on rockets or aircraft, oh, they're super smart. No, <clears throat> no, they're really not. Some of them are, some of them really should be engineers, but some of them are like, some of them are like me, just normal, whatever, just go turn wrenches, this and that. And some of them are just like, how did you, how did you even like get dressed? Like, are you okay? How did you get here? One person, uh, she came in and she was like, we were showing her like, Oh, this is the R and D department. This is this and that. She goes, what's R and D. And we look and we're like, what? I was <laughs> <laughs> just like, no, what's, what's, is it R and D or R and D? Like the sign says R and D, R and D right there. And she goes, Oh yeah. What's that stand for? We're like research and development. And then every time we just, it would just like, I don't have a problem with questions. When there's there's a there's a moment where you probably just need to be quiet. <laughs> there's yeah. there, like we would be like, oh, um, just, ramp it up to fifty just look psi. Just your phone later. And be like, ramp, ramp it up to fifty psi. What's psi? How are you here? Like you are supposed to. You came from you came from an aircraft background. How do you what? <laughs> like this is like where were you before this? this is like day one. <laughs> like well, how do you? And she would just ask the worst questions and then we'd be like, okay, well, if, let's see if you can do the work. And then she got put, we were like, here's a, after a while, it was like, here's a broom. Just, just go sweep. <laughs> but. What's a broom? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I, yeah, I mean, it, was, it wasn't just her. There's a few people. There's, there's a dude that we we're like, okay, go really slow with this crane. Like barely push the joystick okay ramps it full full speed almost kills an engineer like dude what is wrong with you i barely pushed it dude you had to push it all the way like it's not it's not sensitive you have to really push and he's just mm-hmm. like oh I, I i barely touched it i'm like right, there's no there's no way but yeah he, he got a broom too and he got to sweep up oh goody yeah if you get a broom and you're just i mean you, you're just getting paid to sit around for the most part I oh, <laughs> it was people that were oh, like we worked with some really dangerous stuff. Stuff blew up all the time. People almost died all the time. Well, I'm not gonna say whether I'm not gonna say whether there was or was not safety protocols and pace packs ran by elongated muskrat, <laughs> but people may or may not have almost died all the time. It was a super dangerous job. And mm. there, yeah, there probably could have been ways to prevent certain things, but like we didn't, <laughs> we didn't, uh, we didn't want certain people to work with us if our lives are on the line, you know. And we're sitting there like, dude, you, you got to stand off to the side, learn it, like watch us. We'll show you some stuff, and you, you just try to get the hang of it. Because right now, I, I just trust you with that broom. 
and they get all mm. mad, try to go to HR and we're like, they, they talk to us and like, we really don't trust them with the job. And they, they'd screw themselves over because then they get like, Oh, <laughs> it's just like, well, you shouldn't have gone to HR cause we were trying to help you out. We weren't mean to you. We just didn't trust you. But I mean, that's the thing in California a lot is people get really upset if you tell them something that they don't like. And it's just like, mm. yeah, you can't, you're not supposed to be mean to people like us. I don't, I'm from Louisiana, man. Like, if, if you if you don't like a specific name, if it, people like call you like, "Hey, cornbread." I literally knew a cornbread in high school. Like, and he goes, "Oh, I don't like cornbread." Guess what your new name is? You're not going to be called anything other than cornbread, and that includes the teachers. Like, they all know. And then, it, guess what? <laughs> what? Oh. No, it's just the guess what? Now it's cornbread forever. <laughs> Here's your new badge, cornbread. And uh, I mean, it's it's kind of thing. That's how you get nicknames here, and you know, you you make them into your own. You know, like you're like, yeah, my name's Cornbread. Like that's pretty much how he introduced himself to people. But you know, <laughs> it's not necessarily a bad thing. It toughens you up, and I think that's the way the world probably should probably work is, you know, toughen people up. That way, everybody's not so sensitive all the time. Mm. But I don't know. Maybe there's a place for all that. I'm not. I don't want to get political. <laughs> I um, I used to work for um. <laughs> I used to do packing for a a well known distributing company that I won't mention here. Is it Mamamon? I'll just I'll just mention that the guy who owns it is so hilariously wealthy <laughs> that it's nigh unbelievable. <laughs> Like every time I hear the number, I'm like, "You're full of shit." There's no way. <laughs> but then you double check, and it's like, "Oh God, he is." <laughs> but, That's what I thought of but, Elon Muskrat, and like, um, I he was at like two billion, I think, back in 2015, and somebody said, "Oh, he's at like thirty something billion." I was like, "There's no way," and I googled it, the the Elon Muskrat's net worth, and I was like, "Oh shit, it's like thirty four billion." insane because they every year i was there they almost went bankrupt and i was like well, what is going on <laughs> like every year they'd be like well prepare to lose your job because it's gonna happen oh my God. no no raises this year we're, we're about to go under oh. no one's gonna have a job oh, okay oh my god if nasa doesn't clear us this week we're screwed because this building takes like two million dollars a day to run the so the warehouse I used to work at. <laughs> Sorry. Oh no! It is all. Oh my god! <laughs> but every um, <laughs> so it became a running joke with not only my roommates but with my coworkers that we would talk about like you know that certain somebody like he's a deity. Yeah. We're like, do you ever think that he's going to bring his divine light to this warehouse, or are we just never going to see him in person? <laughs> While we're sitting in, like, the lunchroom, it's like, do you think he's ever going to bring that divine light here for us to see? <laughs> and it's, uh, so, I, I will defend not the, not the man, nor the company, but I will say that the job isn't hard. It's a tad unfair if you can't meet what's required of you. But there can be a varying degree of factors. Because that company will hire anybody. Yeah. And I mean anybody. Uh, but the... the it, they're, they're accommodating to the to a degree but there are certain parts that are hilarious to me in how it, they, they will call it a safety issue even if it's something that is the lowest on the list in terms of safety issues yeah. um like f for instance last I was there I, I don't know worked there as of late but um last i was there we had a, a fellow in a in a wheelchair 
one fellow for the whole warehouse. And there is one elevator in that entire building. Yeah. <laughs> but it's the slowest elevator in known existence, and all the rest are stairs. And he works on the third floor with me. Yeah. And so I I was talking to him one day and they we were just they were discussing the fire drills and there's uh the there are big cargo elevators that you're not allowed to ride in, but um they're called VRC elevators. Huge. They're awesome. And they're fast. They're really fast. Um but I I half jokingly half told him like Look, if a fire really happens, I will push you into the VRC, send you to the first floor, and then go down it and collect you myself. Yeah. Like, I will run down the stairs and then run to back to that VRC to come get you. <laughs> but then one of my... So, working in aerospace and all that, how... How... um necessary would you say music is for passing the time um depends what kind of department you're in um Mm. and depends what the company allows um Mm. so the companies that don't allow you to wear headphones um Mm. you'll just get like a radio blast it usually and it's it's pretty it can be pretty important um sure yeah uh, there are times where you're so you're so dang busy and you have to like focus on exactly what you're doing to a precision that Mm. you're you're like okay well well, you should probably cut off the music for a little bit, but yeah, yeah, especially if there's if you're doing something just like menial, it's 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 super important. Or somebody will put on like a movie or something that you can listen to while you work. So, if I were to tell you that if you were to, if I were to tell you you would be doing a job where you're you are standing entirely still, entirely still, you don't get to really go anywhere uh, for ten hours, and there's no music. Ah, screw that. At all. Nah. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah. I, I'm not fucking around. I've had moments where, like, like I'm, like, I'm trying to, like, remember, like, roll through a mental Rolodex of all the music I remember. And so the, that building has a complaint board that you can write the associates can write their complaints, which will be answered by the safety team. Every day, there are five complaints that are just, when are we getting music? Anything. And the main concern is that you wouldn't be able to hear the fire alarms. What? <laughs> well, how loud do they, pl- how long do they, how, uh, how loud do they think you're going to blast that shit? Exactly. <laughs> now, keep in mind, we're not allowed to have our phones in the warehouse. Yeah. Like, you can't even have your phone, so that's a non-option. You can't have headphones. Yeah. But they have done speakers before, and from where I saw, everybody was a lot happier, and then they're like, no, it's a safety issue, because you wouldn't be able to hear the fire alarms. I And... It just, I, dude, I brought up to my manager, I'm like, there's got, we gotta get music or something. And they're like, oh, we won't be able to hear the fire alarms. I'm like, my ears were ringing the last fire drill because <laughs> like, it was that loud. Yeah, I don't, <laughs> I don't know how loud your guys' fire alarms are, but if they're up to code, this should be blaring over everything. Plus, there's like lights and stuff normally, right? So, yeah. I mean, there's, there's no way you're not gonna see or hear something. There are literally deaf people where I work. And Same here. Like, how how are they going to hear it? You know, like that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> like it doesn't. I don't know, man. I think there's just another thing. Like, oh, they seem too happy. We have to, you know, cut out the music. Maybe that'll make them more depressed. <laughs> They'll work harder if they're sad. Corporate depression. I, oh well, that like. So I, the the reason I don't work there now is uh because I, I recently went through a very stressful life change. Yeah. Um and I've had to move house and all that. And so 
I'm not I'm not condemning the the people who work at the HR area in that building. Yeah. Cuz they are good people. Like I will give them that. They're they will try to help you, but there's only so much you can do and uh time off either through that company has to be through either a leave, an unpaid leave or um was it like a medical type leave? Yeah, I don't think a lot of people understand either. Like the HR isn't really there. Like they, they act like they are, but they're not really there to help employees. They're there to protect the uh, company. That is yeah. their primary function is there. They listen to complaints. And if the complaint is in danger of the company being sued or them being fined in some sort, and it's not worth it, then they go ahead and make changes accordingly. But usually, like, there are some really nice people in some HRs, and there are some really crappy people. And some that, yeah. you know, there's some that just really try to help. But, th- yeah, their, their main function is just to keep the company uh, good legally. That's really it. Well, that and a lot of their... So, so they do something which... I, I used to work at retail before that job. Yeah. Where it was, um, like, projections of productivity... So, like, if we have this many people, we can get this much done, and then... But you never meet the numbers, because they always inflate the numbers and all that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, but, um... But when... So, they, they that company does something called voluntary time off. So, it's, hey, we have too many people in this warehouse for today. We don't have enough work to accommodate. Um, let's just send people home. And that's fine by me. Yeah. But the but the problem is, it has to be when the, like, the GM says. And so when this big life-altering change happened, I had to work the next day. And I was given a piece of advice, which was go to work... And just try not to think about it. Kind of hard to do when there's no music. Yeah. And you're you're standing at a desk for 10 hours. And I, um, it's just... Huh. And, um, but, like, the whole day I was talking with my manager, just like, is there any VTO? Can I please go home? And he's like, I'm so, he's like, I'll keep checking. And then at the end of the 10 hours, of course, nothing. I had to be there all 10 hours. <laughs> Dang. That's, that mm. sucks. Yeah, dude. yeah, and so I'm looking to do another job, so I, I think I'll be happier anywhere else. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it all just... Leadership makes everything, and I don't... I, like, it's... I, I've learned through experience that, like, when you when you're going through a company, the first few the in the first few weeks, what's going to decide really whether I stay there or not is my leadership. And that sounds like a oh you make you, you make this or you make that. It's like no, I really don't. Like I make sure that I always have a savings, and that I can mm. I can be covered in case I something like that because I can't work a job that I absolutely mm. hate again. And mm. I, I I look at leadership and be like, are they? Are they willing to work with people? Or I don't know. I'll start like making. I'll start taking down notes. If I can, if I can't do it physically, I'll do at least do it mentally. And on my break, I'll write them down on my phone, and see what I like, don't like about the company. And the company that I'm I'm choosing now with uh, Boeing, they're they're really good. Like man, I within the first week, I felt like I was a part of their like actual employed team, you know. And the whole thing is mm-hmm. like with a lot with them. A lot of times they want to vet you through contract so if i if they if i get it that's fine if i don't that's fine too i'm planning on getting uh my airframe and powerpoint license so i can work on commercial aircraft anyway um mm. but uh they uh the, man they're that com- that that whole leadership team where i'm under is so good like they care about every little thing that's going on and they'll be like hey how was your weekend are you okay do you you know do you have any concerns is any is everything going on is everything going okay in your life because they they want to know it's because it's going to affect them, you know, and they're not going to hold it against <clears throat> you. They just want to know that way. If there's any holdups, <clears throat> they kind of have uh they, they kind of have a little bit of warning. 
And some yeah. companies will and, do that to try to screw you over. But this company, like, man, like I, I took a pay cut to come to this company and uh, man, it was worth it's, it. So far it's been really worth it. But then like was at, at, at pace packs, the first two and a half years were really good. You know, they, I was under, I would, I would, I would get switched to different departments because, you know, I was usually my go to my, my director's go-to guy. He'd be in charge of another department. He's like, Hey, come over here. I'm bottlenecking in this uh, part of the lean process. Um, come help learn, learn the process and make improvements accordingly. And I go, okay. And the last place, man, I fall into that last uh, department and then he quit <clears throat> and went to uh, uh, blue origin, I think. And he, no mm. warning, no nothing. Like he was like, Hey, we're going to get you to QA. Um, and I didn't even get to go to QA. I, he was like, I'm going to put you over here in the meantime and we'll get you over there. I was like, okay, awesome. That'll be a nice little, uh, like job progression type thing. Um, mm. yeah. And then like a week, uh, I went to look for him a week later. They're like, yeah, he, he left. Like he's gone forever. And I was stuck I, under oh. a dictator of like a, a dictator of a lead. And man, he's, it was just the, the last year and a half was probably the most brutal. Like it was more brutal than anything I'd probably experienced like work wise. And I just hated mm. every minute of it working at least 12 hour days, six to seven days a week. I had to spend with this guy and it was just, uh, hated him. Mm. <laughs> it was, I don't, I don't hate hardly anybody in this world. You know, I, I, mm. I'm, a, I'm an optimist. Like it's really hard for me to find stuff that I hate a lot of times, but man <laughs> like this guy was he had like one maybe one thing on the pro list and everything else was cons he's like yeah i don't care if this i don't care if there's a i don't care if palmdale california is on fire you need to get here and i was like dude i there's it's closed off like i can't it'll take me five hours to get there and i was like it's not even mm -hmm. worth it you're you need to drive that five hours and get here like whatever dude i guess i'll do that uh, <laughs> like, hey, uh, my wife's in the emergency room. I can't come in right now. Well, you need to come in, or if mm. you want, if you want to keep your job, he'd stand over you while you were working, and just like criticize every little thing, and be like, okay, I'll change it, what I'm doing to that way, and then you, you start changing what you're doing, and then he'll get mad mm. at you still for doing it that way and not the way you were doing it before. You're like, what do you want? Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't understand. Are you just I, trying to get mad at it for no reason, and he was just crazy. I, I had one, it was a person in the HR at my building. He, like, he, oh, fucking saint. This guy is a saint. I wish I remembered his name. I think it was Aaron. I think. Saint Aaron. Yeah. But I, so one of my parents uh, earlier this year was in the hospital. And at the, at the moment when I had found out, I didn't know what it was for mm -hmm. all i heard was hey they're in the hospital yeah and like i mentioned with the whole voluntary time off thing it's solely dependent on the gm and the overall workload and so i find this out like minutes before getting into work and i'm like i gotta go i gotta go to the hospital i gotta figure this out i gotta see what's going on because I'm like the closest to the hospital and I need to go. And I talked to my manager and he's that little shit. Oh my God. <laughs> but he's just like, well, we'll have, we might have VTL later. I don't know. I'm like, cool. Can I go talk to HR and run down there? And I'm almost in tears because I'm worried and I don't know what's going on. And I go, dude, I got to go. Like, this is. I don't know what's happening. And he he looks around, and there's nobody else at the HR desk. And he leans across, he goes, Okay, look, if you get me a note signed by her doctor that you were there at the hospital, I can excuse your absence. Yeah. And I go, I'm like, really? I'm like, what 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 do I do? What What's the next, like, what do I do? To, do I have to sign anything for that? I'm like, what's the next step? What can I do to make sure that happens? He goes, just get the note but for right now. Go clock out. Go see your mom. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, yeah, all right. I'm like, thank you. Thank you so much. And I, like, turned on my heel and sprinted out of there. But that guy just... And, like, I, <laughs> I like, followed up with him. I'm like, they're, they're, they're doing all right. I'm like, thank you so much, man. It's just... But what a, what a hero. Yeah, I mean, 
like I said, I mean, HR, sometimes you have some really good people in there that just want to help. And that, I'm glad you at least had somebody in your corner, you know? <laughs> yeah. But I mean, <laughs> what is it? Uh, I, I had a friend recently. He, he was, he was trying to join the, uh, he was trying to join the military. Right. And he was like, the, uh, the army won't take me. Should I go air force? And I was like, dude, if the army ain't taking you, the air force definitely ain't taking you. And he's like, you don't have to put it like that. And I was like, it's what's, it's what it is. <laughs> and, uh, he's like, where, where I need to, I need to get some form of work. Where should I work? I was like, come go apply in aerospace, dude. Like you go apply in an entry position. You'll probably still get paid at least 18 an hour and you'll learn the whole time. They'll probably have you watching a hole or something and making sure that everybody's okay. And just like every once in a while, you'll, you'll shout in the hole, is everybody okay? And then they'll go, yeah. And you'll monitor oxygen levels. And that's super easy. You just look at it. Uh, they'll tell you, it'll, it'll say, look for levels between 19 point whatever and 23 point whatever. And um, mm. if it's below or above, you need to get everybody out. And then they'll go, okay, well, it, it's just really easy. And in the meantime, you know, ask, ask people and ask them what, the, what, what uh, ask them stuff about the job. Try to learn something about it. That way, when you get hired on, you know, you'll at least know a little bit. Mm. And that's for a lot of aerospace companies out there. And he'd be like, well, I can make it. I was like, to be honest, there, here's like a list of four companies that'll probably hire you at 20 to 22, 22 an hour just to do that. And I was like, or you could do construction or there's, there's these jobs in every form of like, uh, any, any kind of labor job like that, where you can make good money just to kind of sit around and learn the job. And, uh, I think he's, well, now that you mentioned that I might apply it. Boeing. Yeah, dude, like Boeing, we have right now, we have quite a few people that are, um, that are doing that job right now. And I think we lost some people due to COVID and it wasn't like, cause they laid them off or anything. It's just cause they just decided to leave because they're like, oh, I'll make the same thing on unemployment. So there's no oh, point great. to stay around. And they, Boeing had voluntary layoffs, so they would still count it as a layoff, you know? If you, if you really mm. wanted to leave, you could leave. And yeah, yeah, I know in my area, there's, there's, definitely, there's definitely jobs like that right now. And it would be like FOD monitor or something, some kind of monitor job. And if it looks like it needs, if, if, if you read into it and it says it needs a degree, it's not it. <laughs> But realistically, like I've seen people come in as a propulsion technician with no experience, and that's just working on the rocket or aircraft or um, in just some some aerospace companies. And yeah, it's it's crazy because people, man, like and I'm not trying to get into this too much, but people will sit there <laughs> and and go and get in all this debt to go to school, right? And they get out mm. and they'll be making thirty a year or forty a year, and it's just mm. like. <laughs> if that's your passion, then yeah, but there's no reason to, uh, in my opinion, like, cause I, I've, I almost went that route and I, I sat there and looked at other options and I'm glad I did, but mm. there's no reason that people should go in debt to go to school only for the fact there's so many options. And uh, even if you think there's mm. not in your area, you can apprentice for an electrician or, or, or a carpenter. You don't even have to go to school. You can apprentice and still be making mm. like 16, 17 an hour while you're apprenticing. And then you're when you when you're done with it and you have a couple of years of experience, you're making probably close to 100k a year, and um, more than mm. most people that go to college. And in my in like my field, you can go like you get a few couple years of aerospace experience, you go work for places like SpaceX, make close to 100 grand a year after a few years. Uh, unrelated to the uh, the the company yeah. we've been discussing. Oh, oh uh, yeah, uh, Pacepex. <laughs> <laughs> Which is completely unrelated Shit. to SpaceX, right? Yeah. <laughs> I completely forgot about Elon Musk, um, But yeah, I mean, <laughs> you know, the, it, it's crazy the amount of stuff there is out there. And, and there's, there's a demand for it, you know? And people like to go, mm. well, doctors make a lot of money. So I need to try to go to med school. And then they, they fail their classes and can't, can't do anything. And then they owe all this debt. They can pass it on to the children or parents or anything. And it's just like... It's unfair. Mm. Like, I, and I like, man, like it, it's crazy that people give loans to 18 year olds to go to school. Like if I was in charge of loans, I'd be like, hell no. <laughs> but, uh, you want how much for what? Yeah. And it's just like, I mean, it, it's something that the, the like the military teachers should t like, and that's the thing. Like you see people lead people away from the military and it's like, why though? Because it's a fantastic job. It sucks in the beginning. 
especially when you think mm. it's really hard and you look back on it and be like, oh yeah, that wasn't that hard. And um, I mm. just, it was hard in the moment because I, that I wasn't ever expected to run a mile and a half at a time or do all these push-ups. But once I started doing it, it actually became easy over time. And they really mm. weren't asking us to do much for what they were giving us. The pay's low, but you mm. don't have any bills. I think mm. at first I was getting paid like 18, 19 a year, but I mean, I literally didn't have any bills. It was all extra and I had hardly any taxes come out. So that mm. was all like just an extra 18, 19 a year. <laughs> you could just spend doing whatever. They pay for all your meals. They pay for your housing, no utilities. And mm. I mean, it's crazy that people push things away, but I don't know, man. Like, like I said, I wasn't trying to get into it too much and I still went off. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's so many opportunities out there that, you know, like the, you know, the, the, these, some of these jobs should just, you know, some, some of these jobs, should, uh, pe people with a little bit of work experience should just jump into some of them, you know, like, and, mm. and leave the ones that don't, that don't require any work experience to some people just starting out. But yeah. I mean, even like air traffic controlling, right? I have a buddy, one of my best friends does air traffic controlling. And he was trying to get me into it. All you have to have for air traffic controlling to get into it on the mm. civilian side is four years of consistent work experience. You can work at McDonald's for four years. It doesn't matter. And they, uh, you, you apply, they'll give you a personality test. They like you, then they'll go ahead and put you in their school and you get paid the whole time you're in school for it. It's all mm. free. The FAA does it. And then when you get out, you make like, crazy amount of money but i mean i'm i'm nowhere near any of that now I, like i said i took a huge cut <laughs> from mm. from to, to go to this company but yeah i mean there's stuff all around that pays really good that treats that treats people really good so like people complain like to complain about these companies but you know if, if you go to these companies that treat you really good and leave all these openings eventually they're gonna have to change their way right are those jobs that get filled? One of the two. But mm. I don't know. This is my rant on that, man. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know. Like, if it, yeah, if you're looking for something to get into, there's so much stuff out there. And it just depends on. It's one of those things that you get told in school that you never believe people. What do you want to do? Because there's a, a, a uh, there's a job for it that doesn't require that much education that you can do, or no education mm. that you can do. And. I only advice to any of that stuff is just never take out a loan for school, man. <laughs> like that's the yeah. worst. Like, cause it, man, the, the interest accrues so much and then you're in debt for years and years and years. And you know, they, they basically like, they, they basically, I don't mean to say it like this, but almost like and, and enslave you for a few years to debt. And it's insane. I mean, mm, I, there's certain, you what? There's certainly like a ball and chain attached to your ankle. It definitely is. And it doesn't go away. If you, if you file bankruptcy, that stays there because it's government backed. Mm. So it's, it's nuts. But yeah, man, like there's so much stuff. If you want me to, if you want me to give you uh, links to stuff after this, I totally can. If you have anything in the IT field. Um, I don't know. I'll have to look. I'll ask somebody. I know somebody I work with. He was like an IT master for years. Like he was yeah, making the big bucks a, doing it. Is that that's a perfect? Like I, <clears throat> I love working with computers just in my off time, and I'd I'd love to do it as a job. Yeah, yeah. he started with no education in IT field, and um, I don't know if you've seen some of the stuff that's been passed recently, but you can that now some of these federal jobs you can get into that normally required education. They just require experience now in some in some of these jobs, and you just get some experience in those fields. Go work for the government. They give you these crazy benefits. They probably pay you a little less, but I mean, you never have to worry about a job again. You have so much security; it's crazy. But hmm. yeah, I mean, I, I I can ask him, and he was like I said, he was like an IT master for years. Now, I don't even know why he's doing this job. Like we have so many people that were making crazy amounts in other fields that are just came in, come into this because they think it's so cool. Like, mm. oh, rockets, that sounds awesome. So, yeah, yeah, it is, and it's not at the same time. <laughs> I, I think the anxiety would get the better of me. Yeah, we're working on rockets, but what if I fuck Oh, that up? was how one of the guys started. This guy was a welding inspector, right? He was making probably like mm -hmm. 
38, 40 an hour at least. I think he said he made 60 on some jobs. Um, and he came in and he was so nervous. He's like, man, I don't want to sign any of this stuff off because what if I'm wrong? And like, <laughs> dude, the technicians generally know what they're doing because I'm in, I'm in QA now, basically just looking over mm. everybody's work, making sure it's right. And um, I was like, dude, it, it's, it's really hard to get it wrong. And he, we'd be in class. Mm. He'd be like, oh, this stuff can cause, like this stuff can burn your skin off. And this and that. Like, dude, I've taken showers and this stuff. It's not going to do that. <laughs> I'm like, don't worry. <laughs> What about this jet fuel I'm stuff? I'm covered in it right now. <laughs> what about this rocket fuel stuff? Don't try not to get it on you, but if you get it on you, it's not going to destroy you. <laughs> so, what do you think's in this thermos I brought with me? Dude, I was exposed to so much stuff in the Air Force, and then like stuff that like they say can literally kill you or cause cancer right away. And like I'm still good. <laughs> I don't know, man. Most of that stuff's oh. just kind of whatever. I mean, here's hoping, I suppose. Yeah. So he he get, get all nervous. Oh, I, I don't want to blow up a rocket. And like it's so hard to let it pass that far to, for the whole rocket to explode. If you get it wrong, somebody will let you know cuz you're new and they don't want you to screw up. I think you know what? I that that might be a shrewd idea when this episode comes out. It's really hard for a rocket to explode. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's really easy, but it's really hard. Usually, um, usually on the engineering perspective, it does. Mm. Um, except for pace packs. It's it's hard to engineer a rocket to explode. <laughs> oh, it's, it's it's super easy actually to engineer one, but it's it's hard to um. It's sometimes there's a, like one or two little engineering flaws, like a bracket's wrong and it snaps and the whole thing explodes. And, mm. It, it's usually it's usually not because of the workmanship it's or the, the the quality stuff sometimes every once in a while it is but stuff's so redundant mm. that it it's 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 really hard <laughs> so oh shit so god we have covered a lot I of guess, topics man. here today <laughs> no it's all good like I, I, it's something I like to tell guests that there's no set structure to the show. It's, it's essentially the image of like, a, like a seventies movie, like a car going off. A cliff. That sounds like my whole life. Yeah. That's, that's the, that's the conversation structure on this show. <laughs> oh, for so. Oh, but, you what? What's it? Oh, what's that? Oh, I don't know. For some reason it popped into my head a minute ago when you were saying, uh, when you were drunk, you can't, uh, are you super analytical? Dude, my mm. wife, um, I don't know why I'm bringing this up now, but it just randomly popped into my head. My wife can't, I, 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 I've never seen the Harry Potter movies, right? Mm -hmm. Which is apparently a cardinal sin, but I grew up in like a part of the South where it was, you know, which all witchcraft was bad. Like I couldn't play D and D and stuff yep. growing up and I got into all that stuff later. The Satan's game. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Lucifer. <laughs> Satan. Is that you? <laughs> I call upon was it Celtic Guardian? That's witchcraft. That's Yu-Gi-Oh. What? <laughs> um, but uh, blue eyes, white dragon. <laughs> attack! Attack his life points directly. <laughs> um, but I tried watching them with her recently, and the, the Harry Potter movies. And so she's she no longer wants to watch any of them with, any of those with me. I, so I got completely hammered. I was like, yeah, let's do this. What, what? Wizards and whatnot. And uh, so we get to the first one. I was like, why is that dude wearing a turban? I was like, he looks sketchy. Something's, wrong. Something's off with that guy. She's like, don't, you're going to ruin it. And I was like, what? He's, he's the bad guy, right? He's obviously the bad guy. And uh, yeah. <laughs> she goes, well, you're basing that off the turban? I was like, he's sketchy. I was like, dude, what? <laughs> Fucking look at him. <laughs> I was like, something's creepy. He's wearing that turban for a reason. I know it. And um, it gets to the point, yeah, he, he held the term. She's like, You're, it's not even fun to watch movies with you. You know that? <laughs> and it came off with that dude with the weird eye. Uh, he, he's got that eye patch or whatever. I don't know his name. Um, Mad-Eye Moody. So, it sounds, yeah. sounds about right. I don't know. I, it's always the defense against the, the, the arts teacher or whatever, the, the liberal yeah. arts or whatever. <laughs> the <laughs> liberal arts against teacher. The liberal arts teacher. <laughs> Um, <laughs> it's the liberal arts teacher every time I swear. Um, but I'm sitting there like, all right, something's off with that dude. He's weird. And she's like, it's, 
what you you look stuff up, right? And I was like, I don't know anything about Harry Potter, other than they wave those wands, and then that guy without a nose is the bad guy, <laughs> like the Michael Jackson looking dude. And <laughs> she's just sitting there like, oh, you're such an asshole. And I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. And so it turns out that guy's the bad guy. He's really the the real guy's in a locker. And I'm like, that dude. I, I still I'm I'm still iffy about the the real guy. But like whatever. I think we made it through half of them and then she's uh, I think we the one where uh the Twilight guy's in it. He's the new Batman now, I uh, guess. That, I don't know. I'm not going to watch it. That was Goblet of Fire and I remember that because it was around when Twilight got really popular and then they're like, Oh, he's going to play Edward Cullen. No, I so, was working in an AMC when that came out. <laughs> like, I had to watch it. It was so dumb. So, so feel, feel free to tell, tell your wife this, but I despise Harry Potter. Oh yeah. I can't, man. It's, I don't know. It just though. I, I don't, I, I didn't read the books. I watched the movies and I don't think they were written. I, I don't. They, they don't look like they were written that well. Maybe I'll read them and, and like give a review on it one day. But like, don't. I I grew up with. I grew up reading like Edgar don't. Allan Poe, Stephen King. Um, dude, mm-hmm. I, I mean Robert Frost was probably one of my favorite poets growing up. And you, you come mm-hmm. with all all these all these writers that just they write so fantastically well, you know. And then mm. and then there was that Goosebumps. I love the Goosebumps books. Yeah, they're totally predictable, but they're supposed to be. Are they supposed to be mm-hmm. so crazy they throw you off in the end? Like, then you, there's no way you could have guessed it. And so when I watch mm-hmm. like these chick flicks with my wife, or I watch Harry Potter, which I think is kind of a chick flick in my opinion, um, they uh, I'm probably gonna you're probably gonna get hate on that <laughs> from me. <laughs> somebody in somebody in the comments is gonna get mad. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, they're all so predictable to me, and I'm just like, I bet you Harry dies at some point, and then he comes back to life magnificently, and we didn't even get to that part. She just told me I was right. Yeah. And she's like, how would you even know that? And I was like, it's, they go, the, the sh- whoever wrote this, that woman, um, she- uh, Predictable. Yeah, she, she did the normal rise of a hero, follow the hero story. And yeah, that, that sells, mm. but it doesn't always, I don't know, it doesn't always do it for me. There's some times where that'll really like that. It's just written so well, or it's, or it's just done in movies so well sometimes that I, I look past it, but like, well, like, well, like it's, it's, it's weird comparing Harry, like JK Rowling's writing to like Stephen King, but there's a weird, there's, there's a bizarre narrative structure of how Stephen King does like villains. Yeah. Where it's not like, ooh, who's the villain? It's like, there he is, and then the story is, how the fuck are we going to deal with that guy? So the villain's so intricate. <laughs> it's just like, mm-hmm. what's going on? Well, with It, he is... The whole thing with It was so crazy, because he's basically invincible. And even mm-hmm. when he dies, he's not he's not dead. The likeliness of him actually being dead, he's just going to come back in however many years. I think it was like 27 years or something. But... Yeah, I mean, I, I read those all those books growing up, and I was just like, man, this guy is scary because you can't do anything. And if you can, it only staves mm. it off for a little bit longer. you got to deal with them later when you're a little bit weaker and you believe well, stuff a little bit less. Well, like, recently I've been reading the Dark Tower series. Yeah. Oh, the Dark Tower series. And Yeah, which which is this, like centered around Roland, uh, the gunslinger, and him... Like, it's, it's, there's, like, two, it's, like, there's one villain who's very much the, you know, the Skeletor, the the evil bad guy, and that's the man in black, Randall Flagg. But then there's this other goal, which is the tower itself, and, like, they don't piss around with, like, oh, it's... Like, I don't know what the tower is. It's like, Roland knows what the, what it is. He it just he needs to get there. Yeah, That's you gotta it. overcome it. Like, there's your goal right there, and there's your knowledge. But how are you gonna? What are you gonna do? <laughs> it's it's yeah, like with like how I'm do you, sorry what I was just saying just like how, well like it 
the like the um have you read any of the dark tower i've books? read a tiny bit of the first one <laughs> well, well well the first one has an a very slow opening that if you don't go any farther it's kind of maddening in its own regard because i listened to the audiobook version yeah. And it's, and it's there's like a full two chapters where it's describing Roland walking through the desert and finding like little camps, little like burnt out fires from where the man in black has been. Okay. And, but then he goes on to describe like this intricate lattice work of gr- dried grass that was then burned and all this. And I'm like, how the, what the fuck does that matter? I'm like, what does that have to do with anything? And then it dawned on me, that's how Roland is tracking him, is because the man in black is doing yeah. that. Man. I'm like, oh shit, that's really smart, actually. But uh, I think the best way, or one of the best ways that I like the film, because so there's there's the, the horror movie um, Halloween, right? I'm going to be yeah. uh, playing, I think I'm, I think I'm playing Michael Myers coming up in a fan film um, at some point nice. uh, by No Roads Media, one of my director buddies. But um, mm. they, uh, man, they do Michael Myers so cool. like he's one of the most terrifying villains to me for some reason. He just, you never, mm. he, you know he's there, and you, he gets shot time and time again in these movies, right? He keeps coming back. He wa- no, the, mm. just the way they present him, and the the way they portray him, it's just this this unstoppable killing machine, you know. And he said, mm. is it even the first one? He um. He has that dude in the kitchen. He slams. He he's got his neck. He slams him up against the uh, uh, the wall. He's uh, then he sticks the knife in him mm. and pins him into the wall, right? And he just stands back and mm. stares and like looks, admires his work for a little bit. He's so so crazy in the way they did it. But mm. <clears throat> I don't know, man. Like that's like the per- one of the perfect villains in my book. Because there's what are you gonna do? You can try to fight him off. You're gonna die. And <laughs> you try to run, like he's just gonna catch up. He can walk faster than you can run. All right, like you're yeah. eventually gonna have to take a break. Was it even like people try to hide behind doors in that movie, and he just breaks right through them? There's that time mm-hmm. he walks through the glass door, like what? Nothing, ain't nothing. He gets shot directly after that, but I mean, <laughs> but still, you know. he's just so so creepy in the way they do everything. But that's how I like my villains. It's just it's presented right there. Here's the guy, but good luck. <laughs> Good luck with them. You're going to have to figure it out. Well, one of the... In any Halloween movie, the scariest shot to me is the very first one when he's busting through the closet door. Because <sighs> it's such a confined space. Yeah. And there's that moment moment of panic. Like, he's getting in there. It's only a matter of time. Yeah. Like, by the time he gets jabbed in the eye with that wire hanger, he is in the closet. Yeah. Like, it's not like he poked his head and he's like, his torso and arms are in the closet. But, oh. Yeah, dude, that movie is crazy. But, like, uh, I, I started rewatching it again because that, that movie used to give me nightmares growing up. And, like, that and Chucky. Chucky always got me, too. But that was a, I, I think that was a different thing. I'm not, I'm, I'm not weirded out by Chucky anymore. But uh, <laughs> Michael Myers still gets to me, man. And it's, I think it's just because, like, you know, you can run, you can fight, you can do anything, but he always prevails at some point. Mm. But, yeah, man, it's it's. The, I think the shots in that movie were just the craziest. Mm. <sighs> but I think with that, we will bring this year interview to a close. <laughs> Sorry about extending it earlier. <laughs> no, it's totally fine. I had a wonderful time talking to you sergeant scare oh, thanks, same here um if you wonderful party people at home want to go see sergeant scare's videos i will leave a link in the description below is there a video that you've got on your channel that you would like the party people to see um let me look real quick um i haven't uh i haven't uploaded in like a week and a half I, I still am going to upload i'm just trying to upgrade all my stuff like i was thinking about upgrading my intro everything so mm. those people those are my fans that are listening. Sorry, <laughs> um, I'm gonna I'm gonna send them over to your way. But yeah, uh, yeah. Sorry, I'm I'm doing my best here. I just keep getting distracted with other stuff. Um, there's hmm. uh, there's here's if, if there's people that want to just check it out real quick. It literally is a minute and six seconds, so it won't take hardly any time of your day. It's called Man of Man in the Snow. I'll even send you a link. 
uh, to put mm. in the description if you want. Um, but yeah, okay. it's just a minute and six seconds. And I think it portrays <laughs> my channel really well. Like, I think that, that pretty much says everything you need to know about my channel. Fantastic. Well, I hope all of you wonderful party people at home have a wonderful day. And thank you again, Sergeant Scare, for coming on. I had a blast talking <laughs> to you. Thank you for having me, man. It's fun. And, and I had one last question for you before we go. Um, if asked, would you be open to coming back on as a return guest? Oh, yeah. Guest? Anytime you need me, man. As long as my schedule's free. Fantastic. Yeah. As long as there's no rockets to not be QA'd and then explode. <laughs> yeah, I'm in the... Uh... <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. I'm I, I'm not gonna <laughs> I'm not gonna keep making this longer. The uh, you know the control rooms that you'll see on TV. Mm. Um, on uh, what is it? Other every other week we're doing those for testing right now. I'm literally in those room in in that room on a calm talking to all the engineers. Supposedly the president's mm. coming when we do our final one though. It's gonna be fun. Mm. But yeah, it's, I'm not I'm not trying to make it too long. <laughs> now now if anybody. If anybody decides to climb into the rocket that happens to be called Major Tom, do your best not to panic. I'll do my best. <laughs> I can hear my accent coming out but, now, and it's weird. Because sometimes it comes out, and sometimes, like, it, I usually just try to keep it down, you know? <laughs> gotta hide it. Gotta keep the mask yeah, on. that Air Force thing. Oh, you got an accent. Oh, no, no, I don't. Not at all. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm just a simple American man doing the simple American thing. Ha ha. <laughs> Huzzah. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> Indubitably. But, but thank you so much for coming on. Oh, yeah, man. I, I would love to have you back on in the future, and I will see all of you wonderful Parker people at home next time. All right, bye-bye.